Howdy guys, Dane at Zim's Guitars. Got my partner Paul down here today. Uh, I don't know what the hell that means, but uh, I'll tell you what, because this is the internet and the last video we did was about the 1979 Greco uh, uh, EG800PR Ace Fraley Custom. and uh, Great video, it turned had, out great. We had some people that questioned whether or not it was anywhere near as good as a Gibson. And the answer is it was better than a Gibson in the 1970s because in the 1970s Northern was making horrible guitars and everybody was after the vintage 59 Les Paul. <gasps> it is the gold, the holy they grail of guitars. Are. Yeah. They still are. <clears throat> so we're going to have a video uh, about one of the great guitar builders um, that is one of two names that you need to know with regard to building a 59 Les Paul replica. Not a copy, not a fake, but a replica. So in 2019, Gibson came under new management, uh, changed their entire design of their guitars, improved the quality of both their production line and the custom shop and we have the custom shop 60th anniversary 1959 as they call it the R9 reissue Les Paul to show you right here in this case come on in close let's take a look ta-da so this is an R9 mm -hmm. now here's the deal with the 1959 Les Paul from 1958 through 1960 they are considered the holy grail, the best era of Les Paul guitars. That's the one that everybody's looking for. 1959 seems to be the sweet spot for whatever reason. There were a total of about 1,600 of them built. Of those 1,600, about 600 have been accounted for. So wow. there are actual 1959 Les Pauls that have yet to be accounted for. Nobody knows where they're at. Um, they ended some up in a landfill. No, they could be in somebody's grandmother's, you know, attic or right. or in the hands of private collectors, whatever it is. But as it stands right now, that's the guitar that everybody is trying to replicate. And Gibson has taken several opportunities to do it. Uh, they started first in with the Kalamazoo series in 1979. Then they had the Heritage series. Um, then the Heritage series Elite. All those things. They were small run guitars. Well, they were production runs of small run guitars to try and recreate the 1959 Les Paul. Eventually. Guys like Max Barnett and Chris Derrig mm -hmm. got a hold of actual 59 Les Pauls and started making replicas of them. Right. Um, the Gibson Custom Shop got word of that, and interestingly enough, we'll tell a little bit about that uh, later on, but the Custom Shop now has gotten to the point where a few years ago, they changed their entire design of this thing. This is based upon an actual 1959 Les Paul owned by Joe Bonamassa, nicknamed Carmelita. Oh, wow. And what they've done now with the advancements of guitar technology, they x-rayed and scanned Carmelita and built a custom shop version of that guitar. So this is essentially... That, that poor girl to get probed like that. <laughs> this is essentially a clone of Joe Bonamassa's 1959 Les Paul. That that's what they offer up in the custom shop Carmelita. now. Carmelita. As their 59 Les Paul custom shop. Now... The colors in these vary widely, and the reason why is because the paint that they used back in the day faded unnaturally mm -hmm. and individually based upon um, you know time and how it was exposed to certain lights, ultraviolet lights, and stuff like that. So it's rare that you'll find two with the exact same fade. There are similar fades, but mm -hmm. they, they fade at different levels on the edges. You'll hear of lemon drop bursts. Yeah, there's you'll hardly hear... any down in here. Yeah, and that's... then you can see the, the red starting in. And it's not even a red, it's more of a, almost it's, it's a, a rust brown. or a burgundy. Right. Right. They all started off as cherry sunburst, um, but not like clown burst that you would see in the 70s, like you see the Ace Fraley guitars and all that that were really, really bright. Mm -hmm. And these all faded differently, so you'll see a variety of different quote-unquote bursts. This is, I think, faded iced tea burst is what they call it. Right. Um, but this is essentially, they scanned Bonamassa's guitar, and then Gibson, with only the only uh, um, variants from... The way they constructed them in 1959 to now is because some of the glues and some of the chemicals that they used back then are right. now environmentally outlawed. Hide glue or whatever. No, hide glue is still used. They can okay. still use that, but there was formaldehyde glue and stuff like oh, that that they used. Yeah. That was, they've had to recreate synthetically. Yeah. It killed people. Yeah. So, this has obviously the nickel ABR1 bridge, um, the thumb bleeders in here. Everything mm -hmm. is wired 500 K CTS bumblebee caps, 50s wiring, that whole deal. Big, big PIO, which mm -hmm. is paper and oil capacitors, which is something that was exclusive to that time period. Mm -hmm. You'll notice the binding is a little thinner on the neck. You look at like the fret nibs are tiny because the binding is so thin on the neck. They made it period correct, way more period correct 
than they've ever done before. Um, and these are called custom buckers. They are the closest thing that you can get, allegedly, to the original PAFs that were wound. They're also unpotted. So if you had a 59 and you could actually ohm out the pickups from a real 59, these are this as would close match to out. those would match out as close as possible. Yeah, no tone circuitry and all that nonsense that they did later on. This is, as according to all of the quote-unquote experts, as close to you can get of a night, and you'll notice it, like it's all very aged looking. It's called right. VOS, which is vintage original stock or vintage original standard. Mm -hmm. um, it's not aged like Murphy Labs or anything like that. And it printed a yeah. serial number instead of something that is stamped in. Yeah, and they're different now because there are different serial numbers. Like there are some that will be like, it'll be nine for R9 um, and then four digits for the serial number. This one is ninth month of, of 19 and then a four digit serial number that, um, and I cover it so that the, the fakers can't. We could blur that out. Yeah, so the yeah. fakers can't, uh, can't build one. Um, but these are, these are as good as it gets. And they started making them like this with the Carmelita scan, I think in 2016, this being the internet, somebody will correct me, I'm sure, in the comments. But I think it was 2016 when they started doing the Carmelita scan, which is basically Joe Bonamassa's 59. That is really cool. What did Joe <clears throat> Bonamassa pay for that guitar back then when he bought that? Is that out well, in the public? He's had it for a while, um, but I'm sure he paid a pretty penny for it. For a, an actual 59 Les Paul, you will pay somewhere between three and $500,000. Mm -hmm. They are basically a house mm -hmm. uh, in a guitar. Mm -hmm. This guitar right now, this is a 2019 60th anniversary, and really mm -hmm. the thing that, that really makes it look like a 16th anniversary, they give, you, they give you all these things, but they give you a little medallion that points out 1959 to 2019. It goes on the back of the that toggle, goes on the back of the toggle right. you know, mm -hmm. position. And then they give you a certificate of authenticity and all the nonsense that, that comes with custom shop guitars. Super but cool. They've and been the case. Yeah, and the case is very period correct as well. This is the kind of case, with the exception of this latch here, it would be a five latch you know, case from the mm -hmm. 1950s with the pink inside. They didn't have the satin <clears throat> shroud at the time. Um, so and starting all uh, mahogany, there was no maple used, and they didn't start the maple until. Oh, it's maple. It's a maple top. Maple top. Yeah, yeah. one piece mahogany. So the body one is one piece. is one solid slab of mahogany. Right. They have the newer they ones. They didn't start pancaking them until the seventies. And they weren't they weren't quarter sawn and glued or any of that stuff like that. It's right. one solid piece of mahogany. One solid piece of mahogany. Um, You'll never see a scarf joint in one of them. No, not on not on a, uh, an American Les Paul. No, and there's no volute. They didn't do that until the '70s when Norlin was screwing up the guitars. Um, Late '69, maybe the first volute. <clears throat> so these are starting in 19. I mean, excuse me, in 2016, they started doing them like this. This is just happens to be the 60th anniversary edition of it. Every guitar since 2016 that you get from the Gibson Custom Shop that is an R9 is based upon this guitar. Or and that's when the new CEO, uh, JP, the new came? The new guy took over in 2019, which is why oh, okay. the quality of the production line has gotten better. Uh -huh. um, so this is a first year with brand new management. Yeah, and this is as, as good as they get. Um, and if you're looking on the used market for one of these, you'll pay anywhere between high $4,000 to $7,000. Um, and the guitar we're going to show you shortly is, um, in the next video. In the next, in the next video. video, we got a really cool one to show you guys. And it's probably, if you're looking for one of those on the used market, you'll pay seven times what you paid for this, if not more. Um, and originally, I don't know how much it cost to have that one built, but they haven't been built in 20 years, and, uh, and we'll talk about how, that how one. How would you describe the neck carve? It's a 59 Les Paul. This is the 59 carve. It's not thick. thick. Baseball no. bat? No, no. The 57... <clears throat> 54 through 57 were the fattest necks. Okay. Um, and then starting in 58, they got a little thinner. 59, they got even thinner. And then 60 mm -hmm. is really the thinner of the... When people mm -hmm. talk about the 50s neck, mm -hmm. this is what they're looking for, the 59 neck car. Right in the middle there. This is what they're looking for. This is, again, everything that they talk about, if you were to build the perfect Les Paul, is based mm -hmm. upon a 1959 Les Paul. All right, Paul. So uh, can I play it for a minute? No. Sure. Come on, man. Okay, here we go. Let's plug it in. So it's been sitting in the case for a couple of months, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't play. I don't play that one very often for obvious reasons, because it's 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 like uh, it's like in Spinal Tap. You can't play it. It can't be played. Don't even look at it. Don't even look at it. 
Do you hear that? Yeah, the sustain. Well, it's not playing. Can, can you hear that? Well, you would if it were playing. That's right. Yes. So don't even look at it. In fact, give it back. So, yeah, I don't play that one very often, but it has been sitting in the case for months, and believe it or not, it's still in tune. It's such a cool guitar. The best, probably the best and most expensive guitar I own. Really? And I traded into it. <laughs> Did you? You got a good trade. I remember that trade. You were. Uh... Yeah. Well, it turns out that guy. He he uh, he gave away an Ernie Ball for it. I did in a roundabout way. He wanted the Ernie Ball, and then he started a he he backed out of it, um, and then said, "Well, I'll sell it to you for cash." So I ended up selling the Ernie Ball for way more than he wanted for that guitar, and then pocketed the difference in the bank, gave him the money he wanted for that guitar, and then months later, that guy went and bought another one. It's a, it's a great hobby to have buying and selling and trading guitars. It's a great hobby. Trading is the fun part, trading, which is kind of what you've built this whole empire on, is trading guitars. Right. <laughs> All right, so here is the bridge. Yeah, those are called custom buckers. Custom bucker. Now I've heard of the pro bucker that goes in Epiphone stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, and they got burst buckers go in the burst buckers go in these production line Les Pauls. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, we were talking about 2019. The 2019 production line Gibson Les Pauls are the best they've ever put out from a production line. They're amazing. The difference between that and the, the original 50s series is basically they built that one with period correct, you know, parts and 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 to make it look that way. Uh -huh. um, the 2019 50s original 50s series Les Paul standard plays almost as good. I mean, most people will tell you it's not worth the four thousand dollar difference in price, and they would probably be right. Sounds intonated perfectly. I apologize for my playing, guys. Not much of a player, but it is a great guitar. And Paul, I appreciate you bringing this thing in and showing everybody. <laughs> 